And then please remain standing for the pledge of allegiance. Thank you very much. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day and all the blessings it has to offer us individually and, and collectively as a city. Bless the city of Norfolk, every citizen who resides within its boundaries, and every employee who works to make our city great. Father, bless our mayor and each member of our council and our city manager as we attempt to govern with fairness and guide this city through challenging times. Allow us to be tender with the young, compassionate with the aged, sympathetic with the striving, and tolerant of the weak and of the strong. Bless th those who are less fortunate and allow them to feel the warmth of your compassion and love during this holiday season. These and all other blessings we ask in your son's name. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. The clerk will please call the roll. Ms. Johnson? Here. Mr. Protegiru? Here. Mr. Smeagol? Here. Dr. Wibley? Here. Ms. Williams? Here. Mr. Wynn? Here. Mr. Frame? Here. Uh, the motion is to excuse Mr. Riddick, please. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. The motion is to dispense with the reading of the minutes of the previous meeting. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. The uh, clerk will please read the resolution for the closed meeting. A resolution certifying a closed meeting of the Council of the City of Norfolk held in accordance with the provisions of the Virginia Freedom of Information Act. Adopt the resolution, Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Norfolk City Council Chambers. Thank you for coming out tonight. Uh, for those of you who do not regularly attend our council sessions, the process which we will follow is the first thing we're going to do is take up public hearings, and we have a number of them. After the public hearings, we'll move directly to the regular agenda. We have about 10 of those matters. Um, we'll vote on all of these items in just the way they are numbered on the uh, printed docket. At the conclusion of the regular agenda, if any member of the public would like to address the council on a non-agenda item, that's something that's not on the printed docket, you'll be given that opportunity, and a number of you have elected to do that. Um, so we will move straight ahead and then to public hearing number one, please. Public hearing one, scheduled for this day under state law to hear comments on a one-year lease agreement between the City of Norfolk and Fest Events Limited on property located at 123 Grammy Street. Okay, and Karen Sherberg is here to answer any questions if anyone has any. Okay. We have an ordinance approving the terms and conditions of a lease with Norfolk Fest Events Limited for certain premises located at 123 Granby Street, Norfolk, Virginia, and authorizing the execution of the lease. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegiero? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Public hearing two, please. Public hearing two scheduled for this day to hear comments on a five-year lease agreement between the City of Norfolk and Fest Events on property located at 120 West Main Street. Right, Karen is still here. And I have an ordinance approving the terms and conditions of a lease with Norfolk Fest events for certain premises located at 120 West Main Street, Norfolk, Virginia, and authorizing the execution of the lease. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegiero? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Public hearing three. Public hearing three scheduled for this day on, to hear comments on a lease agreement between the City of Norfolk and Supreme Petroleum Inc. on property located at 418 St. Paul's Boulevard. And I have an ordinance approving a lease agreement between the City as lessor and Supreme Petroleum Inc. as lessee for the lease of that certain property owned by the City located at 418 St. Paul's Boulevard and authorizing the City Manager to execute the lease agreement on behalf of the City. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegiero? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Public hearing four. Public hearing four scheduled for this day to hear comments on a lease agreement between the city and BK Chicken Corporation on property located at 300 St. Paul's Boulevard. Okay. Call the roll. I have an ordinance approving a lease agreement between the city as lessor and DK Chicken Corporation as lessee for the lease of that certain property owned by the city described as 300 St. Paul's Boulevard and authorizing the city manager to execute the lease agreement on behalf of the city. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegiero? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? 
Aye. Uh, public hearing five. Public hearing five scheduled for this day to hear comments on a lease agreement between the city and JR and Sang Corporation trading as Pandasia Gourmet on property located at 520 Main Street, Suite 1. We have an ordinance approving a lease agreement between the city of, uh, as lessor and JR and Sang Corporation trading as Pandasia Gourmet as lessee for the lease of certain property owned by the city described as 520 Main Street, Suite 1 authorizing the city manager to execute the lease agreement on behalf of the city, dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Smigel? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R1. R1 is an ordinance granting a special exception authorizing the operation of an eating and drinking establishment known as Cuisine at Slover on property located at 235 East Plume Street. Planning Commission recommends approval by 6-0 vote. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Drew? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Do Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R2, please. An ordinance granting a special exception authorizing the operation of an entertainment establishment known as Sassy Cakes and Sweets on property located at 330 West 22nd Street, Suites 104 and 105. Okay, there are five members of the public who were signed up to address the council on this. When I call your name, please, if you'll come to the podium, identify yourself for the record by giving us your full name and present home address, and then please limit your remarks to three minutes. But before we get there, maybe we better we better clarify exactly what we're yeah, putting on. And I ask the city attorney. Yes, this matter was discussed by the council earlier, and the ordinance that I've been voting on has been uh, changed so that um, it will. Um, uh, expire on January the uh, 27th unless the council then uh, votes that it's in compliance and extends it for a one-year time so that they had received a letter from the Ghent Business Association asking for the elimination of the burlesque entertainment and uh, and the maximum first term to be one year and added to that is that uh, um, on the 27th of January, it will return, and unless approved by the council, uh, it will be only for uh, between now and the 27th of January. And you, you want to, I mean, the and they purpose don't behind the, this brief amendment was to allow the, the business to get open for the holiday seasons. And we understand that there, you'll uh, still would like to have the opportunity to go to the Ghent Neighborhood League, mm -hmm. and that should be. Uh, in, in, in order. And so we will take this matter up again on January 27th, assuming the, any concerns, or we'll be, be prepared to vote all over again, uh, assuming, and then we'll hear the concerns of the Neighborhood League, if anyone has any, or anyone else who would like to come back at that time. But uh, just trying, in the interest of fairness, we thought at least they deserved an up or down vote on this matter for so they could at least get open during the holiday seasons, if that's the will of the council. Did I say that right? Is that okay? So we will evaluate okay. to start all over. They, right. they don't have to go through the planning and any of that, but they okay. come back here on January 27th. Klaus Elliman. Good evening. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of City Council. Thank you very much for, for your support and interest in this application. I think the proposal you come forward with uh, is a great solution to get this matter to move forward and give the applicant an opportunity to operate their business and have the benefit of the special acceptance. So I really thank you for that, and I'll keep it brief. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Zelmer, David Zelmer. Hi, I'm Good evening. David Zelmer. <coughs> uh, I'm representing the Ghent Neighborhood League Board, um, and I appreciate what you've just said about uh, the temporary ex uh, extension or whatever you've described there. So, and I'm pleased not to have to walk through what we've talked about two weeks ago. Uh, but while I'm here, um, I do want to address something because I still think it's appropriate. Um, there's a set of emails that's gone back and forth where Mr. Williams basically implied a question about whether this should come under the view of the GNL or the GBA. And I guess I'd like to get, have a chance to say it is not either or. Um, the city of Norfolk has got two brands, basically, that are well known. The downtown. It's a real downtown in this area. And the other one that's got quite a bit of fame is the GNL, or I'm sorry, the, the Ghent area. And if to support that fact, 
here's a issue from Compass this last week where there's a discussion about who's got the edge, Ghent or downtown, you know, you are around. Um, my point here, the discussion bears out that the reason Ghent is an interesting place for people to visit is because of the community. So I appreciate what the, what the GBA does in terms of promoting their business district, but that C2 corridor, the two directions down Collie and on 21st Street are embedded in the Ghent community and that is what makes it interesting. So <coughs> we, the GNL, uh, the board particularly, and the residents, we are very interested in what goes on. Um, we take it very seriously. We've done our best in this case to try to accommodate them. In this case, even when it turned out it went to planning council before we got there. So um, my other point here is that looking forward, because we're talking about a new zoning, zoning ordinance rewrite, um, we're talking about redeveloping differently, especially in areas that have been redevelopment. Norfolk is all developed. Um, what you're looking for in downtown, getting away from monolithic zoning and in Ghent and other PCO districts is multi-use and the intricacies of that. And this should be an opportunity to be thinking about how you do that. And it doesn't come out just in the zoning ordinance. It doesn't just come out in specifications and the approval of they meet this criteria, they meet that criteria. There's, we move from a modernist era of top down to networking. Uh, concepts, synergy, you're looking for those intangibles of livability and, and viability. That comes from community involvement. And as you folks know, it, it's not easy. It's not easy for us to turn on a dime. We'll do our best. We want to make sure that we uh, get as much information as we can out to our community so our community has a chance to get our voice. So we appreciate uh, what you've done here with this uh, short-term thing, and we look forward to talking to the applicant. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Thelmer. Cedric Hill. Good evening. Good evening. Welcome. Uh, Cedric Hill, uh, 2012 Donnybrook Trail, Chesapeake, Virginia, 223320. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and City Council for hearing my application. Um, Definitely pardon, pardon me for missing that meeting with uh, Civic League. Uh, it, was, it was an emergency situation that did come up. Um, I definitely made every other attempt to be part of the community. I want to be a good corporate citizen again. I know what it means to be to have a restaurant again. This is my very first business venture as far as restaurant on that side. And so, you know, again, this is a large opportunity. Um, we made sure we joined the Get Business Association back around three months ago. I even catered a morning smooze back in mid-October. And I know the morning smooze actually invites a lot of people from GBA and also the Ghent uh, Neighborhood League. For everybody can come meet us, we had around 30 to 40 people that showed up. Like, from my understanding, that's what I needed to do in order to be a part of the community. Um, Definitely, I appreciate the opportunity to be open until the end of January. I definitely will not miss the meeting on January 15th. I definitely will be there. Um, and then I look forward to seeing you guys on the end of January. Thank January you. January 22nd, I believe, right? 27th. 27th. All right. That sounds good. We'll let you know. All right. Thank you. Appreciate it. Good luck. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, Jeannie Blassingham. Good evening. I'm Jeannie Blassingham. I live at 1308 Manio Street in Norfolk, Virginia. I've been a resident of Norfolk for more than 30 years at 1308 Manio Street. I've been residing for more than 14 years. <clears throat> um, my point to you all tonight is that the redundancy of the request for these special exceptions is becoming more routine than what should be considered as special. Special means once or twice for some totally out of the ordinary business event, a special occasion. It doesn't mean routine business. And this particular applicant was supposed to appear before the Ghent Neighborhood League on the 20th of November and failed to do so. And it is my understanding that while efforts were made to communicate with the applicant, um, there was no response. 
So neither here nor there, you have um, been gracious enough to allow him to operate without having the Get Neighborhood League consider this particular mode of operation until it appears January 27th, if what I heard you say was correct. Um, very gracious of you to do so, but quite honestly, without the consideration of the Neighborhood League, I really think you've jumped the gun. Um, our input is important as a part of the community, certainly as a part of the Ghent community. I would appreciate the opportunity for you to consider the decision that you've made within the context of what should have been a routine protocol step-by-step -step measured decision. I will be back before you or if necessary when you take this matter up again. Thank you for your time tonight. Thank you for coming down. Mark Carrier. Hello, Mayor and City Council. Uh, my home address is 1216 Club Point Road in Chesapeake, but I live at 350 West 22nd Street in Ghent. Um, I I'll have a for that. Yeah, yeah, I have a letter from one of our neighbors. We're neighbors with uh, Sassies with Ron, and the letter's from Ray, um, from Megan Olson, who uh, just talks about how, how good Ron has been as far as a neighbor. And as a neighbor of Ron since he's been with us, um, what I've seen from him and his team is the willingness to get involved in the community. Um, been act I personally been actively involved with the GBA for the last seven years supporting the community, and Ron wanted to get right on board with that. So, so we're pleased to have Ron with us, and we're pleased to have his team with us. Thank you. Okay, thank you. That uh, concludes the list. If there's any comments? Okay, call the roll, please. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance as amended and adopt. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? I, I just wanted to say, um, when new businesses come in, there is sometimes some confusion about how our civic leagues and our associations work and going before them. Not every city operates that way. And so, you know, I don't, there could have been a misunderstanding and yes, he missed that meeting, but I don't think that we should judge people just because they don't go before a civic league. It isn't the end all be all um, ever, of, of everything that we do in this council. And there's been lots of civic leagues that have come down here and we have completely said the opposite of that and given them a chance. So, you know, just I, I think it's important to note that it's just not done that way in every city. So I. Dr. Wibley. I actually would disagree with Tommy. I think it was actually quite apparent from the application that these um, uh, two different spots needed to be checked off as a list. I think the city actually makes it quite clear. But yeah. that being said, um, I appreciate uh, Mr. Wynn coming up with a compromise for this. I frankly am not too keen on breaking with tradition, but I'm willing to give uh, this gentleman the benefit of the doubt. I will say that the woman that spoke earlier uh, re- um, acquaints us with the fact that people do not understand special exception. And I understand why they don't accept, uh, ex understand it, because it's a silly title. <laughs> and so we once again need to rethink about that, because uh, uh, we constantly have uh, people in our community understandably being confused. By that. So I think I'm back to the vote, which is I. Ms. Williams? I agree with Tommy. I think that the process sometimes is confusing, and I think sometimes it depends on who you talk to and planning as to what you get. We get some applications where the people are told to call, call the council members. We get some applications where they're told to see the Civic League, and some people are told both, and some people are told nothing. So I think that possibly planning could do a better job in making sure that their information is updated and that everybody is consistent with the information that, that, that they receive. That being said, I vote aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Um, Paul, can I just say one thing? I, I'm looking at the application. Right. When, when you apply, it does say that you have to list who your council people are on there, but Terry doesn't say that you have to go and speak to the civic leagues on the application. I, I just noticed that on I the mean, application, it, it talked about both of those uh, places that needed to be done, if you read through the application. But but, okay, it's, I'll it's, give everybody the benefit of the right. doubt, and if people need to be more specific, that's fine. Thank you. But everybody else that applies has done that. Both both agencies they've gone to. You didn't need they the figured it out. Okay. Um, I don't want to open up this can of words, but Bernard, 
doesn't the state code say special exception? That's the it, problem. It doesn't, indeed. And that's so that the reason we have to use the silly so zoning ordinance. It's, it's we have to use this, the language of the state code. Okay. Um, thank you. Where are we? Is there right, three, three. Or three. An ordinance approving an assignment of easement from East Beach Marina Apartments, LLC, and authorizing the city manager to accept the assignment of easement on behalf of the city. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Hey, Border, I just have a question about this. Um, Mr. Hen is here to answer that question if you have. Yeah, the easement. He's always here. On that, why the term East Beach was continuously used in that when the neighborhood that it's actually impacting is Bay Breeze Point? Um, I don't know why East Beach. Um, that uh, it, it was a matter of a convenience that the holder of the easement is East Beach Marina Apartments LLC. Right. But they're encroaching into property that's located in the Bay Breeze Point Homeowners uh, 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 Association. Uh, yeah. So the drafter, uh, Chip Beeman, just took that name and shortened it to East Beach. Okay. So it wasn't meant in reference to location and geography, but to the holder of the easement. Yeah. East Beach Marina Apartments LLC. Okay. And it's my understanding that they actually encroached on this before they got permission to do it. Um, which uh, it was brought to the attention of the city by the Bay Breeze Point Homeowners Association president because they were actually digging in people's yards, um, you know, before there was an opportunity to get permission. So I, I just want to make sure that um, everybody understands that. It's nothing against the developers because sometimes the contractors don't look into that, but it did cause some contention between um, the neighborhood and the contractor. So, but I... Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R4. An ordinance approving the conveyance to the City of Norfolk by Norfolk Redevelopment and Housing Authority of certain parcels of property that are currently part of the Park Place Redevelopment Project and authorizing the City Manager to accept the deed on behalf of the City. Um, Rodney Jordan? Uh, good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of council. My name is Rodney Jordan. I'm at uh, 2506 Murrow Avenue. Uh, not here to oppose uh, what's being uh, presented here, but I just wanted to share some thoughts and comments for your consideration as you move forward with this effort. I've had the opportunity to uh, work, be involved in Park Place for several years, still a homeowner in Park Place, uh, work with the Y and Granby, work with the Vision Engagement Project and several other initiatives there in the neighborhood and uh, this piece of land used to be called the Park Place Triangle. So just two things I just wanted to bring to your attention associated with this. The first is there's been some conversation about the possibility of putting a dollar store or a um, uh, convenience store in this, in this area. And as part of the effort that's been going on with uh, marketing the neighborhood, kind of like the branding that was mentioned earlier with Ghent, is to try to make sure that the type of development that occurs there is something that continues to be attractive uh, for the community and for that part of the city and would continue to uh, align with the efforts to have uh, uh, a strong and mixed income and vibrant neighborhood that fits with recommendations coming out of the Poverty Commission, Neighbors Building Neighborhood, and so forth. So one, I would just ask that if, if that is something that's being considered that um, uh, maybe something else be considered there that's more fitting with the aspirations of um, of that area. The second item I'd like for you to give attention to is um, if these parcels were acquired over time with community development block grant funds, then what has been uh, historical in the city is that when the land goes from the housing authority to the city and then the city to a private concern, that oftentimes, depending upon the sales price, that funds that are to come back into the community development block grant program as program income hasn't always accrued. Yeah. So if there is any involvement with uh, CDBG funds here, I would just ask that you all would monitor and to make sure that if there are any land sale proceeds, that those funds go back into the program income so that it could benefit those uh, neighborhoods that are intended to benefit from that program. Thank you. Thank you. This should be our practice. Okay, call the roll, please. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? 
Aye. R5, please. An ordinance approving a lease agreement between James E. Baylor Holding Corporation as lessor and City of Norfolk as lessee for the lease of property owned by James E. Baylor Holding Corporation located at 3755 Virginia Beach Boulevard, authorizing the city manager to execute the lease agreement on behalf of the city and authorizing the expenditure of a sum of up to $155,000 from funds heretofore appropriated to cover the lease payments for the remainder of fiscal year 2014-15. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R6. An ordinance to amend and reordain certain sections of Chapter 6.1 uh, of the Norfolk City Code so as to update the code regarding administrative and departmental name changes and to reflect changes in certain provisions of state law. Dispense with the charter requirement just, for Just a second. Whoa, whoa. I'm sorry. Jean Lindman. Good evening. Good evening. I respectfully stand here tonight and ask that you pass. You're, you are Jean Lindman and. Oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. I'm Jean Lindman and I live at 1432 West Princess Anne Road, Norfolk. Yes, ma'am. I respectfully stand here tonight and ask that you pass the proposed changes to the city's animal code that are before you. I also want to at this time acknowledge city manager, Mr. Jones and his staff for their robust attention to the ordinance since I last addressed council. Thank you. At this time, I ask that you consider the Animal Advisory Board's recommendations for actual, although still moderate, substantive changes to our city code. Let me point out two recommendations that could be easily considered and enacted in the very near future. One involves dogs and the other involves cats. The first one, the tethering of unattended dogs should be prohibited. Hampton and Suffolk prohibit tethering. Chesapeake, Newport News, Fairfax and Richmond limit tethering to one hour. Norfolk, like Virginia Beach and Portsmouth allows tethering for three hours. This is completely unenforceable as no officer is going to monitor a tethered dog for even one hour, much less three. Norfolk should join Hampton and Suffolk and prohibit unattended tethering. Two, ear tip community cats should not be seized in our city. The ear tip indicates that the cat has been fixed, vaccinated for, against rabies, and is being cared for. Lives will be saved if our animal control humane off officers leave an ear-tipped community cat in its home where it's found. Let me add that there are currently several bills proposed by Senators Stanley and Martin defining and pr promoting TNR practices for the upcoming 2015 legislative session. While the Animal Advisory Board has additional and will have more proposed changes, I respectfully suggest that these two proposals, tethering prohibition and keeping ear tip cats out of our shelter, could be readily considered. Thank you. Thank you. I don't have a dog. What is tethering? Help me. Um, Tied it. Tied it? Yeah. Tied Thank it. you. Tied okay, unchained. That's correct. Okay. Thank you. A rope, a rope chain. Rope, That's right. Chain. Okay. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Mayor, sorry. Right. If, uh, with regard to what we've just heard, uh, if it's possible that uh, on the issues that were raised by the citizen, that the issue of tethering be discussed uh, at council, that that be presented to us, and the issue of ear tip cats be presented to us either for ordinance or policy, uh, I'd like that brought before us. And also, um, I picked up and read in the pilot that um, Senator Lewis has requested that PETA be investigated for what uh, occurred on the Eastern Shore. What bothers me is, is though my understanding, and I could be wrong, but I'd like to have information on PETA and uh, the killings that occur uh, here in Norfolk if the dogs or cats are brought to our city from another city and they are killed in our city, especially knowing that if it's occurring 
here on in the Atlantic City area where their offices are located, there's a, a housing complex, condominium complex of the pier that basically sits almost on their property. It's their next door neighbor. And that being said, the fact that if they were bringing in uh, that if, if we need to discuss a prohibition to bring in dogs and cats from other cities to this city only to have them killed in our city. And then in turn, I'd like to discuss uh, whether or not they have a permit to kill dogs and cats at that facility in our city, whether they've been picked up on our streets or not. I find it very difficult to believe that they have a permit to kill animals and next door citizens are living. Uh, and so I'd like that uh, brought before us and discuss their permits and uh, the status of their ability to permit in the city and do what they're doing. So if we can set that on a, an agenda, sure. we get back. Thank you. Where were we? Okay, call the, call the roll, please. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R7. An ordinance to amend and reordain section 2-155 of the Norfolk City Code 1979 so as to add one new subsection, 2-155K, identifying the standard of review. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. William? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R8. An ordinance to amend and reordain section 2-155.1 of the Norfolk City Code 1979 so as to add one new subsection 2-155.1L identifying the standard of review. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Smigel? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Do you have an add-on? I have one additional item, numbered R9, and it's an ordinance to schedule council meeting dates for 2015 and to amend and reordain section 2-4 of the Norfolk City Code 1979 so as to establish the time and place of the regularly scheduled council meetings. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Smigel? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. That's all I have, Mr. President. Thank you very much. That concludes the formal portion of tonight's agenda.